Hello everyone! Very welcome back to Flower Fairy Flora channel and listening Flower Fairy Flora um, bedtime stories. First of all, um, before I tell you for today's story, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Maya and I'm a writer. I love meditation, I love children uh, and of course I love um, children as well. So um, I put all of these uh, passions together and I create very special meditative audio fairy tales with Flower Fairy Flora. More about these special fairy tales you can find on the link up or down. Um, it depends on which uh, channel you um, watch this. But just a quick um, description of, of it. Actually, these are very, very special stories because um, are great for adults and for children too. Um, they can learn you how to breathe deeply, how to release daily stress. You can, uh, the children have, uh, can have a conversation with Fairy um, and she um, takes their issues um, together. Um, you can learn breathing uh, on a very funny uh, and very playful way and if parents or any other adults listen these stories with your children you can support them in the right way if they decide to talking with fairy tale um, loudly um, also these fairy tales um, can help um, uh, create child's imagination because um, he is um, because fairy tale um, is questioning a lot so that means that children have free way to express um, their feelings their um, imaginations and everything so this is shortly about me about my work and about uh, very special flower fairy flora fairy tales um, like i said you found them on the link up or down but for today, I choose one classical story. I really love stories um, written by Beatrix Potter. So uh, you probably know uh, Beatrix Potter by Peter Rabbit, but today we won't read Peter Rabbit, but we will read uh, the tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher. This is also a nice story. So prepare yourself for listening and enjoy. Once upon a time, there was a frog called Mr. Jeremy Fisher. He lived in a little damp house amongst the buttercups at the edge of a pond. The water was all sleepy sloppy in the larder and in the back passage, but Mr. Jeremy liked getting his feet wet. Nobody ever scolded him and he never caught a cold. He was quite pleased when he looked out and saw large drops of rain splashing in the pond. I will get some worms and go fishing and catch a dish of minnows for my dinner, said Mr. Jeremy, Fro Jeremy Fisher. If I catch more than five fish, I will invite my friends Mr. Alderman Ptumley to a toys and Sir, Sir Isaac Newton. The Alderman, whoever, eats a lot. Mr. Jeremy uh, put on a Macintosh and a pair of shiny goloshes. He took his rod and basket and set off with enormous hoops to the place where he kept his boat. The boat was round and green and very like the other lily leaves. It was tied to a water plant in the middle of the pond. Mr. Jeremy took a reed pole and pushed the boat out into open water. I know a good place for minnows, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Mr. Jeremy stuck his pole into the mud and fastened the boat to it. Then he settled himself, cross-latched and arranged his fishing tackle. He had the dearest little red float. His rod was a tall stalk of brass. His line was a fine long white horsehair and he tied a little wriggling worm at the end. The, the rain tickled, trickled down his back and for nearly an hour he started at the float. 
This is getting tiresome. I think I should like some lunch, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. He punted back again amongst the water plants and took some lunch out of his basket. I will eat a butterfly sandwich and wait till the shower is over, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. A great big water battle come up underneath the lily leaf and tweaked the toe of one of his goloshes. Mr. Jeremy crossed his legs up shorter out of reach and went on eating his sandwich. Once or twice something moved about with a rustle and a splash amongst the rushes at the side of the pond. I trust that is not a rat, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. I think I had better get away from here. Mr. Jeremy showed the boat out again a little way and dropped in the bait. There was a bite almost directly. The float gave a tremendous bobbit. A minnow, a minnow! I have him by the nose, cried Mr. Jeremy Fisher, jerking up his rod. But what a horrible surprise! Instead of a smooth, fat minnow, Mr. Jeremy landed little Jack Sharp, the stickle back covered with spines. The stickle back flaunted about the boat, pricking and snapping until he was quite out of breath. Then he jumped back into the water. And a shoal of other little fishes put their heads out and laughed at Mr. Jeremy Fisher. And, a while, and while Mr. Jeremy sat disconsolately on the edge of his boat, sucking his sore fingers and peering down into the water, a much worse thing happened. A really frightful thing it would have been if Mr. Jerry, Jeremy had not been wearing a Macintosh. A great big enormous trout came up. Kip, flop, flop with a splash and it sized Mr. Jeremy with a snap. Oh, oh, oh. And then it turned and dived into the bottom of the pond. But the trout was so displeased with the taste of the Macintosh that in less than half a minute it spat him out again. And the only thing it swallowed was Mr. Jeremy's goloshes. Mr. Jeremy bounced up to the surface of the water like a cork and the bubbles out of a soda water bottle. And he swam with all his might to the edge of the pond. He scrambled out, out on the first bank he came to and he hooked come across the meadow with his Macintosh all in tatters. What a mercy that was not a pike, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. I have lost my rod and basket, but it does not much matter, for I am sure I should never have dared to go fishing again. He put some sticking plaster on his fingers and his friend's boat came to dinner. He could not offer them fish, but he had something else in his larder. Sir Isaac Newton wore his black and gold waistcoat. And Mr. Alderman, Alderman Ptumli Tortoise brought a salad with him in a string bag. And instead of a nice dish of minnows, they had a roasted grasshopper with ladybird sauce, which frogs consider a beautiful treat. But I think it must have been nasty. And that's the end of today's story. We heard a lovely story about that, how frog went fishing, which was maybe not the smartest idea because usually um, frogs don't eat big fishes. But it can happen that big fishes can eat frogs. So... Um, well, the story has a happy ending, that's pretty great, and also friends have a lovely dinner. I hope you will also have or you already have a lovely dinner today and um, I would just like to invite you to um, click on the link up or down, you can listen um, very special Flower Fairy Flora fairy tales 
and um, I wish you a very nice evening and good night and see you soon. Enjoy! Mwah.